All right, how come I'm not popping up here? Good evening, everybody. DJ Styles. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about how to take pictures of your uh, your sculpture or your mask. But I'm trying to find my my live feed on my computer here. Let's see. Let's go to my channel. There I am. There I am. Okay. Let's cut that volume off. What's up? Angelo. Um, I'm wide awake now. I got my, I needed my rest, but I want to take, I want to talk about how you take pictures. Uh, first of all, you definitely want to do it from a tripod. And <clears throat> why I say that is because, uh, and you also want to be back far away from your, your project. This is about six feet where my tripod is. And I usually bring it into about, about right there is where I, I like to take the picture from. There's my tripod and there's my sculpture. All right, now the, the key is, all right, now what I'll do is I'll put this on the tripod, my camera. All right, put this on the camera. And I want to lower this. I want to be dead even with the mask, or the sculpture. In this case, it's not a mask. All right, I want to be dead even. All right, and I'm going to tilt this up. That's a little too zoomed in. And I want to be at the same level as the sculpture. And I think I'm almost there. I can't show you where the camera is. All right, so now you can take that picture. You see the picture as it is right there. Uh, wow, that picture looks awful. Why is the quality so lousy? Um, you know, what's going on with YouTube? All right, so the first thing I want to do, all right, ignore the quality of the picture because it looks really bad on my on my computer screen for some reason. Uh, but what I'd like to do is when you're photographing, I'm going to try and zoom this in just a little bit more. Huh. Right about there. Hmm. Yeah, it still looks crappy. The... Uh, all right, so let's say you're sitting in the chair and, you, and you, you're trying to hold your phone, all right, and you want to take a picture of your, your mask or your sculpture. Uh, the problem is you don't want to change the elevation of the, the uh, camera. Hold on, let me get in front of this camera real quick. You don't want to change the elevation of the camera. The camera's about right dead even right there, right with the, right, I got the camera about the same height as the nose. Maybe right at the eyes, right at the eyes. The camera's about dead even with the eyes, going straight across. All right, now, what I like to do is I like to take still shots from that exact position. And then when I want to take another picture, I got a still, let's say you're taking a still shot of the picture straight on. Then you want to turn your mask. You want to turn it just ever so slightly. All right. I just turned it just a little bit. And keep doing that. You keep doing it. You do side to side. You want to get a complete profile. You want to keep working your way around the entire uh, sculpture. Like I'll take a still shot from there. Then I'll take a still shot from here. You know. Uh... This is meant for somebody's particular. I'm hoping Jim joins me here. Uh, anyway, and uh, I want to explain to him how he has to take pictures of the, the mask that he has that he's going to help me out with. 
So, all right, so you want to do that. You want to keep taking these pictures until you're completely, and this way, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm moving it a little too far. You're only supposed to move it maybe an inch or two at a time, and then you take, you keep taking pictures until you get your profile. All right. You definitely got to get a good profile. All right. Um, and you keep working away. I, I keep going in the same direction with the, with the sculpture. I'll keep taking still shot, still shot, still shot, still shot. And then what I do is then, once I'm completely around the entire thing, at a level, at the level, and I, move, I never move the camera, then I start again, all right, with the camera elevated all the way up, as high as I can go. That's as high as I can go. Now that changes the perspective of the uh, of the sculpture. All right, and then you do the same thing all the way around, and you keep doing that and keep doing that. And you definitely don't want the camera close to your subject because it squeezes the face. It makes it look. Uh, I don't know. It just it it just narrows the face. It draws the it draws the face into the camera, and it really makes it look bad. You know, uh, your sculpture does not look right when it's done like that. Okay. Now, I need shots also like that. All right. I need shots also. Like that. All right, so you're gonna have to take those pictures and then put the camera down again. Um, uh, they have those, uh, you know, phone things where they actually hold, it holds the camera and you can take a picture from a little switch in your pocket. Uh, they have those, I can't remember the name of the, it's a, I think it's a, I don't know. It's a it's a it's a mechanism that goes attaches to your camera, and you're able to hold the camera really, you know, your phone real good, and get some really good pictures. The other thing I have to do is I have to get ca camera shots low. Oh, I don't know what I just knocked off there. That's interesting. So I have to get low shots. Um, and what I mean by that is I got to take this off of here. Now, these high shots, you really can't get, uh, from, from the, uh, from the tripod. Neither can you get the low shots from below. You want these kind of shots too. I need every shot that I can get all the way around. The whole, and then you just keep moving the, the, uh, uh, all right, you keep moving the, uh, the camera or your, 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 your sculpture or your mask and put, reposition it every time you do it. Um, it's important uh, to get those kind of pictures when we're trying to copy something or sculpt something. Uh, otherwise, we're stuck with like, and one of the biggest reasons why the, uh, the Captain Kirk mask, or should I say the Michael Myers mask, is so difficult to do is because we're depending on pictures. And we don't have all the angles. We don't have, we just have straight on shots. We have a couple, you know, we have a couple angles, but we don't have a ton of pictures that show every little angle of the uh, sculpture. Like I would love a picture like this. Um, a little too close. As you can see, it draws in the picture. Wow, it looks like crap. I don't know what's going on, but the, the image looks terrible. 
So yeah, like you, you want the angles all there so you can see every little detail and how it's, how it's shaped. And uh, it's important when you're taking pictures. Now for effects, if like you're selling a mask, uh, you want the proper lighting. This is not definitely not the proper lighting for selling your, your mask. Uh, you want to lower, I can lower these lights down. I can, I can lower them down. And what really helps is if like you have a mask and you're trying to sell it is put a light behind the head that shows a glow in the back of the head. And you may want to put some lighting that shine up behind the, behind, like towards the ear. But say if I put a light back here on this wall and I have it splashing up on the side of the face. Like you can have all these different cool effects that you should do if you're trying to sell a mask. Like say you have a mask and you want to sell it on eBay. Um, the lighting is so important. The lighting has to be right because uh, if, the, if the image looks terrible, chances are you're not going to sell that mask. And believe me, I learned the hard way myself and I learned this trick from Nick Malpagano and he shared this openly already on, on, on YouTube on how to backlight a you know, how to, how to do the lighting for uh, your mask. But he's, he's absolutely 100% accurate and right about that. If you don't have the proper right lighting, uh, lighting up your, your mask that you're trying to sell, uh, you're, gonna, you're doomed to fail because you don't want like, like look what happens to this face when I go too close to it. Look how narrow it becomes. You know, you're, you're taking the picture too close. It looks awful. It looks like, it's, like the face just got real skinny and the eye holes got bigger. But if you back up, it becomes more of a natural look. So now, now you're seeing the actual size. And, and, and this camera is, I mean, for whatever reason, the film is awful. So this is important to uh, understand and know uh, for those that are trying to sell their mask, I'm actually going to develop some kind of, uh, I need a, an area where I'm going to do some really cool effects. Uh, I'm going to put a green screen behind my, my masks when I'm selling my masks and, uh, maybe, uh, without sound to put some images of like the, uh, Halloween movie or, you know, whatever, you know, I'll probably do some cool stuff or even, you know, original uh, backdrops on it with a green screen. You know, that's the one thing Nick hasn't done yet. I'm putting it out there for you, Nick. Get a green screen. Learn how to use one. You'll really love it. Um, so that'll be really cool. I'm going to put a green screen behind my my uh, um, behind my masks that I'm selling that I'll be putting on eBay. Or I'm not doing eBay. What am I saying? Etsy or um, probably my own website. I'll just do the website. So, but uh, I'll be getting busy because I just today I went out there and I uh, sealed my con. I power washed my concrete, all the you know the new concrete pad out back. I can't. I power washed all the concrete around the house, so it's nice and bright. And now I've sealed it. I also power washed my side deck here and that's ready for stain. I'm going to stain that up and make that real nice. Um, you know, I'm just trying to get the, the property ready and then I'm going to put all my, my benches back where they belong uh, out on the pad. I'm going to put the tables back up, but the only thing I won't be able to do out there is I will not be able to work with uh, mortar. Uh, my, uh, my Ultra Cal 30. I don't want that on top of my concrete. No, 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 no. Not a good idea. So the only thing I'll be doing out back uh, on the pad is my latex because latex won't stick to the concrete. You know, I can spill that on there and it just peel right off of there in a, you know, a couple hours, you know, once it's dry. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to be getting busy because I got to order this coming week or the following week, I might have to wait until the following week because uh, I, I got to get started. I'm, I'm moving over to another job uh, for the summer and then uh, back to my normal place in the, in the winter. 
but um, I I have to uh, I have to get that squared away. So as soon as that's as soon as I'm underway with that, and I can start now focusing on getting this guy done, uh, I'm gonna silic I'm gonna do a silicone master copy of this with a resin hard shell over top of the master copy. But I want to do a couple of things to this yet to make sure that I'm accurate. Um, and, uh, I want to make sure that it looks really accurate. So I want to, uh, I want to, uh, get a couple more pictures and, uh, you know, this is not this, this, this mask that I'm making here. The night creeper 78 is a rendition of like, it's like different, like, you know, it's got the Kirk, uh, the Kirk look, it's got the, um, the lips and chin or the flashback mask. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a combination of like the best of everything, you know? So, uh, I have so many people that are, have made remarks about how great the lips and the chin looks on this. So I want to leave that alone. Um, but I want to, I want to critique it just a little bit, a little bit better. And with the help of my man, Pipe Master, uh, hopefully he sees this video and he uh, he gets the pictures that I need. And uh, I can't wait to see the mask that he has um, that he wants to show me. And uh, hopefully it's really, really nice. So anyway... Um, yeah, it'll, it'll give away some of the little things that it, you really can't see with pictures uh, as far as the um, the shape of the lips exactly. Like, I can show you here. <clears throat> this is actually the Shatner Life Sculpt. All right, now, those lips are not quite like the Shatner Sculpt. And why I say that is the, uh, the lower lip is a lot further in and it's sunk in a lot more than on the uh, flashback. Um, the, uh, the upper lip is a little bit more puffy and rounded and kind of at the tops, at the top of the lip kind of sinks back into the face a little bit. Let me try to show you what I'm talking about. We're just talking about the lips. And if you see how that, that shape, that profile there, of the lip. Um, I have the, the the scowl right there, this part, the dead center of the screen. I have the scowl nailed on my sculpture. That scowl is right on the money. It looks exactly like that. And uh, now here's a bump out right here that I don't want to, I don't want to put into my sculpture. I have my bump outs there. They, they are there. Uh, they're just, they look a little bit more mean, so to speak, but they're there. Now this is a plastic mask, but this is a replica. This is actually from the life cast. It really is. It's just shrunk. And I know how they do that, but that's a whole nother. This is the actual life cast uh, of William Shatner. 75. It's, it's from the life cast. Now, is there little changes through, you know, shrinking and all that process? I'm sure there is. But this this will give you a, uh, if you're trying to copy. Now, I like I said, I don't, I don't believe in doing, like, I, I can, I can have, like, I can get the life cast mask from somebody and then do a, um, a 3D scan of it and literally reproduce the exact uh, life cast. But I, I, there's no challenge to that. You know, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, just really doesn't work for me. Uh, I need to be able to sculpt it. Everything I've done there was with my hands and my eyes and a lot of frustration, a lot of time spent to get it to where it looks now. And uh, it's close to what the, uh, the Shatner looks like. Very close. Only the lips are a little different. They're made to look more like the, uh, the flashback mask. And uh, anyway, guys, I just wanted to uh, 
tell you guys exactly how you want to make sure that you photograph your your masks or your sculpture. Uh, and you want to make sure that you capture every detail, a lot of, a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures, every angle, you want to be above it. You want to be dead straight on it and you want to be below it and you want to go completely around the entire sculpture. Um, you want to every angle possible, even like, like when you're up above it, you're going around, you're moving that, you're moving that every inch by inch around the whole thing. So you see the whole sculpture and then you want to definitely have come straight down on top of the head. If that's the top of the head, you want to be straight down on top of it so you can see the whole shape, you know. Uh, now, that's good for when somebody's trying to recreate a sculpture. Uh, you need every possible angle. Now, the problem is if it's a mask, uh, the hair's on it. So looking down onto the, 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 the head is not, a, it's not going to do a sculpture any good. But... You want every possible angle and good lighting to uh, premiere your mask if you're selling it. Uh, if the lighting's bad and if you're too close to the, um, that draws in that face, you definitely don't want to be too close to your sculpture or your mask. Um, you always want to be at least six feet away from it and then use your zoom on your, on your phone or your camera. Uh, but you have to have, you have to, respect that distance you need to keep keep six to eight feet away from your uh, sculpture or your mask when you're taking pictures or videoing it because it, the camera does the same thing in video or you know when you're doing photos <clears throat> so with that being said guys i'm going to bounce off of here you guys have a wonderful night and i'll upload this video so uh, my buddy can watch it and hopefully he takes all the pictures I want him to of his uh, pride and joy. And uh, anyway, I got to get off of here. Have a good night, and I'll see you on the next video. Hopefully I start these projects coming up. Yeah, I got the, the deck. I needed that concrete done. That's done. And I just got to put my deck together again so I got my bench out there and I can I can get back to work. I got to bring my my uh, my spin table. I'll probably bring that in here. I'll be doing the molding process inside my studio here when I mold. Even when I do the silicone, I'm going to do that inside the studio here. So that should be fun. That's going to be something I something new that I have to learn how to do. I have to build up a base around this neck because I don't want the silicone going down all the way over top of the armature. So I'm going to put like a, a little valley there to catch the silicone on the on the uh, on the right around the base of the neck, <clears throat> and then I'll uh, and then from there we will make uh, a silicone master copy. And that should be awesome because once the silicone master copy is done, then I can make multiple heads from the sculpture and I can alter alter each one of those sculptures the way I want. Um, but anyway, peace, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Bye.